Good afternoon, students. Would everyone please stand up either beside your chair or behind your chair or near your desk where you have a little bit of space. We're going to um, ask and answer some questions and your body needs to move just a little bit. We're going to play Simon Says. So can you, uh, Simon Says, find a place on your body that contains cartilage. Go ahead and point to it or move it. What are you pointing to? I see some ears. Yep, that's cartilage. That's sort of soft tissue that when you were a baby, that's what your bones were like. And then most of your bones changed over to have hard calcium mineral in it. So now it's bone. So your tip of your nose would be okay. Your ears. Okay. Simon says, point to a voluntary muscle on your body, something that you can move by thinking about it. Mm, yeah, you can march, you can move your arms, you can sway, you can dance to the music. I see you. Simon says, point to your skull, point to your ribs. Ha ha, caught you. Ha <laughs> Okay, here's another one. Simon says, point to a ball and socket joint. Think of your shoulders. You can, if you can move it in a circle, it's probably a ball and socket joint. So your shoulders, you can move your arms in a big circle. Think of a baseball pitcher and how he does that. Really using his ball and socket joint. And your hips are also ball and socket joints. Point to your Achilles tendon. Hmm, did I catch you? I caught some of you. I saw it. All right, you can have a seat. Today we're going to be talking about more about how the human body systems are interconnected. How is the skeletal system and the muscular system interconnected? Right, we've got other systems that are connected with the muscular system, the nervous system, and the digestive system. Um, do you remember <clears throat> about the different types of muscles? Three kinds. Skeletal muscle, those are your voluntary muscles. Then we have two types of involuntary muscles, cardiac muscle, which is your heart. Mm -hmm. And your smooth muscle. What's the difference between voluntary and involuntary muscles? Remember, cells are the building blocks of all life. So voluntary and involuntary muscles, all muscles, are made up of cells, but they can be different types of cells. Those different types of cells make up different tissues in the body, which then make up different organs in the body, which include systems, body systems. So today we're going to learn about the system that controls all the other body systems. You know what that is. Uh, we're learning about the nervous system. Okay, it includes the brain and all your nerves. Um, in the next two read-alouds, so it's going to be a, it's important, so we're going to spend a little more time in it. We're going to hear how the nervous system is closely interconnected with all the other systems in the body. Now, this word nervous has nothing to do with feeling anxious or worried or scared about something. It has to do with your nerves. So um, we're going to be talking and listening and reading about what the nervous system controls. Let's go ahead and get started. One more time. So stand up and stretch. Put your hands on your hips, bend forward as far as you can. Now straighten back up slowly, one vertebra at a time. Oh, that's better. Roll your shoulders back. Nice. Shake out your hands. Shake out your feet. That feels better, doesn't it? Now we're ready to get started, are you? As you sit back down again, think about your body systems that you used to move just now. Did you use your skeletal system? Yes, you did. 
It gave you the ability to stand up. How, did you use your muscular system? Absolutely. Your muscles helped you move your bones when you stood up and you bent down and you shook out your hands. Um, <clears throat> how did your muscles move? What told your muscles to do that? Your brain did. And your brain is part of a very important system. We know the name. It's called the nervous system. The nervous system is the body's command center. One that sends orders to all other parts of your bodies. It is your communication system carrying messages that control all the other systems. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. Oh, it's in the center. It looks like an axis. Without these central controllers, none of your body's other functions would happen. Your brain is a soft mass of tissue protected by your skull, a rigid helmet-like structure of bones encasing the brain. The spinal cord, the main nerve pathway between your brain and the rest of your body, looks like a long, thick rope. It extends from the base of your skull down to your tailbone. It stretches down your back and it weaves its way through openings in your back's bony vertebra. Your spinal cord is protected by your spinal column, that flexible column of vertebra. A network of nerves links your brain and spinal cord to muscles and sense organs all over your body. Each nerve is a bundle of fibers tiny thread-like cells encased in thin, fatty tissue. These bundles of specialized cells carry messages to and from your brain. These messages travel faster than the blink of an eye. Some nerve cells collect messages from your brain and carry them to your muscles. This is what happened when you stood and bent over a few minutes ago. You consciously controlled your own actions with your brain. First, you made a decision to stand, and your brain received that decision. Then, electrical signals were sent out from your brain along nerve fibers to your muscles, telling them to tighten or contract. For every movement that you make, your brain coordinates the timing of muscle contractions, telling your muscles when to tighten, how much to tighten, and for how long. Your nervous system works with your bones and muscles to follow your brain's commands. Some nerve cells collect messages from your body and from your environment and the world around you. These nerve cells are called receptors. Receptors collect messages through your eyes, your ears, your nose, tongue, and skin. Each of your five senses works with your brain to help you understand the world around you. So your five senses are like your receptors. Eyes pick up light and color and send pictures to your brain to help you see. Ears pick up vibrations from sound waves, carrying them to the brain to help you hear. Sensory cells in the nose react to chemicals in the air, sending messages to the brain brain to help you smell. Cells on your tongue react to chemicals in food, sending signals to the brain to help you taste. Receptors in your skin detect many different sensations, alerting your brain and your spinal cord to feelings of pain, heat, cold, pressure, and touch. Many times nerve signals pass through both your brain and your spinal cord, but not always. Have you ever touched a hot iron or a hot pot on a stove? What happened? Well, most likely you jerked your hand away from the heat very quickly, almost unconsciously. You didn't have to think about it. The nerves in your fingers sent signals to your spinal cord, but this time you did not need your brain at all. Your spinal cord sent a message back to your arm muscles, telling them to contract and pull back really quickly. It was a very quick reaction to an emergency situation, and that is called a reflex action because the body acts automatically without thinking.
Didn't even have to go to the brain to think about it. Some of you may remember being at a doctor's office for a checkup when the doctor or nurse tapped your knee gently with a little hard rubber mallet. Well, other common reflex actions are flinching and sneezing. Those don't happen in your brain. They sort of happen along the spinal cord. Weird. Because a nerve is made up of many cells, nerves can send many messages at once. Each nerve cell sends its own message through the nerve. You've learned that some nerve cells collect messages from the brain, whereas others collect messages from the environment. Still other nerve cells collect messages from inside your body, like your digestive system. Inside the human body, the brain and spinal cord work together day and night, coordinating many activities that we don't really think about too much. For example, your breathing is controlled by the central nervous system. What else is going on under your skin that seems involuntary or automatic? Your digestion, your heart rate, your sleeping patterns are all automatically controlled by the brain and spinal cord. Your emotions, moods, and memories are controlled and managed by the nervous system too. The body's command center with its network of nerves is always working, even while you sleep. Hundreds of billions, b -b billions of microscopic cells are sending messages that go dashing around your body at amazing speeds every second. Many of these cells are bundled up inside nerves, the body's wiring. These nerves branch out in all directions, carrying tiny electrical chemical signals from your brain and spinal cord to the tips of your fingers and toes, to the inside of your eyes and your ears, and to every other part of your body. Some nerves are much thinner than a strand of hair. Others are as thick as a bungee cord. All have important parts to play in the nervous system's nonstop communication process. The nervous system processes almost everything that you do. It helps you laugh. It helps you scratch your chin. It helps you run, walk, swim. It lets you scream with anger and shout for joy. It lets you smell tomato soup simmering on the, on the stove. It lets you hear squirrels rustling in the leaves and to see a brilliant sunrise peeping over the hill. Thank your nervous system for that tingling feeling you get when you jump into a cold stream, or the instant pain that you feel when you prick your finger on a rose thorn. Whether you are two or 92, your nerves are a central part of everything that you do. Next time, we're going to look more closely at your body's main control center, the brain. <laughs> um, here's a riddle before he goes. I am called a bone, but I'm really a nerve. My name suggests that I have a sense of humor. What am I? Do you give up? I'm the funny bone. Ooh, do you know where the funny bone is located? It's a very vulnerable nerve that's at the end of your elbow. If you hit that nerve at the end of your elbow, the nerve sends a tingly feeling up the rest of your arm. And if you injure your funny bone, the result is anything but funny. It can be very painful, causing numbness in your forearm and your hand. So it turns out that the funny bone is not only not funny, but it's not even a bone at all. Be careful. Next time you're wrestling with your friends, you won't be laughing if you hit your funny bone. Next time we'll be back and we will talk more about the brain. But let's do some questions first. What is one phrase you could use to describe the nervous system? A phrase is just a collection of words. It's not a real sentence. It doesn't have a capital or a period. It probably does not have a subject or a predicate. It's just a nice collection of words that are carrying some meaning. So a phrase that you could use to describe the nervous system would be the command center. 
And what does the central nervous system control? The central nervous system controls the function of the body and all the other systems. What makes up the nervous system? The brain, the spinal cord, and your nerves. What is part of the axial skeleton that encases the brain? Your skull. And why is it important for the brain to be protected by the bones in the skull? Well, the brain is vulnerable to damage because it's soft. It doesn't have any much structure of its own. Um, and damage to the brain could be very serious, can affect all the functions of all the systems in your body. So it needs to be protected by the skull. And your skull needs to be protected by a helmet. What's the purpose of the network of nerves in the nervous system? Well, the nerves link the brain and the spinal cord to muscles and other organs all over your body, sending signals back and forth throughout the body. Some messages go from um, your environment to the brain. Some go from your brain and help you make sense of your environment. What's a nerve? A nerve is a little bundle of tissues that's in, encased in a little fatty tissue. At the beginning of the read aloud, you stood up and stretched. What happened between your brain, your muscles, and your bones? Well, once you made a conscious voluntary decision to stand up, electrical signals were sent from your brain down the spinal cord along the nerves to the muscles involved in standing. Those signals coordinated the timing of the muscles to contract. Remember, muscles can only pull, they can never push. So they are contracting and the nerves told the muscles how long to contract, um, how much to contract, and they helped the bones to move. Could your brain be the control center of your body if it had no receptors? Why or why not? Your brain could not control your body if it had no receptors. Receptors are the nerve cells that collect messages from inside the body and through the five senses and send those messages back to the brain. The brain is then able to help the body process how to react and understand the world around you. What is a reflex action? Well, it's an automatic, unconscious, involuntary action. And what causes reflect, a reflect action to happen? Nerves from one part of, the, part of the body send signals to the spinal cord, which send a message back to the muscles, sometimes not even involving the brain at all. It's really fast. It's a great way to protect you. Name some situations where reflex actions take place. Well, those could include touching something hot and your hand moving away quickly, having a ball thrown at your face and flinching or moving your um, face quickly, closing your eyes if there is something that's coming towards your face, pulling a hand away from something that is sharp or prickly, sneezing at sniffing pepper, or having your knee jerk upward when tapped. All of those are reflex actions. And why are they important in emergency situations? It may depend on the emergency situation, but one of the main reasons why they're important is because that action can happen really quickly, and it's a protection mechanism. Thank you so much. Tomorrow we will hear more about the nervous system.